If one of your children came out to you as gay, how would you respond? What would you tell them? I'd look him in the eye and tell him I love you. A new high of 71% of Americans support so-called gay marriage, up from just 27% in 1996. This 71% is also significantly higher than it was in 2015, which was 58%. 2015 being the same year gay marriage was made legal. In the Supreme Court's opinion, delivered by Justice Anthony Kennedy, it states, The history of marriage is one of both continuity and change. That institution, even as confined to opposite sex relations, has evolved over time. No, of course the institution of marriage can't evolve. It's laid out in the book of Genesis, the original plan for Adam and Eve, which is for the entire human race. And with our Lord, it's raised to the element of a sacrament. God said to Adam and Eve the purpose of marriage. He said, Peru urvu umilu haaretz. Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. So it's, it's right there in the text. The point of marriage is procreation. That is the point. And the church teaches officially that the end of marriage is procreation. The means to the end is union. So the two are unified. And in Jesus Christ, that's raised to the level of a sacrament. The dissent, led by Chief Justice John Roberts, states, This universal definition of marriage as the union of a man and a woman is no historical coincidence. It arose in the nature of things to meet a vital need, ensuring that children are conceived by a mother and father committed to raising them in the stable conditions of a lifelong relationship. This statement, essentially in line with the Catholic Church's 2,000-year-old teaching, highlights the importance, or rather, the purpose of marriage, which is the good of the spouses and the procreation and education of offspring. Being truly open to life and committed to the education of the children are both necessary when considering the validity of any marriage. For example, if a couple is not open to life, the marriage is invalid, meaning it is void and ineffective, because something essential was missing, in this case, the intention to procreate. The sacrament was not actually administered or conferred. Likewise, if a couple does not intend to educate their children properly, this would also make for an invalid marriage. The church spells this out in canon law regarding mixed marriages or marriages between two baptized persons, one party being Catholic while the other is not. The Catholic party is to declare that he or she is prepared to remove dangers of defecting from the faith and is to make a sincere promise to do all in his or her power so that all offspring are baptized and brought up in the Catholic Church. I know in our modern world it's not popular to hear wives be submissive to your husbands, but that is in fact what St. Paul says, that is in fact what the Church teaches. But the very next line he says, and husbands, he says, agapate tasconaikas, love your wives, even as Christ loved the Church and gave up his life for her, sacrificed himself for her. What's very interesting about this passage is the word for love he uses. He says agapate, which is agape, which is the highest form of love. That's Christian charity. In Latin, it's translated caritas, which we translate into English as charity. So he doesn't say love your wives like eros or philios or porne or anything like that. He could have used another Greek word. He says uh, agape, he uses that word, which is charity. So he's saying, husband, love your wives with charity, the divine charity, love her for love of God. And now we understand from this that procreation is also then brought to a supernatural level. So the church teaches that in the bringing up, in the raising of children, there's raising them in the faith, which is the most important thing. So in Jesus, the point of marriage is, yes, for the union, but the end is the children, not just for the sake of children, but so that he, you can raise saints for him so that he can populate heaven. In 1984, President Ronald Reagan famously said, Society has always regarded marital love as a sacred expression of the bond between a man and a woman. It is the means by which families are created and society itself is extended into the future. He then added, We will resist the efforts of some to obtain government endorsement of homosexuality. But this mentality would not stay. Despite marriage and the family being the building block of society, conservatives have for decades now folded on this issue. The three Republican presidents after Reagan, both the Bushes and Donald Trump, all caved to the homosexual ideology. In 1990, George H.W. Bush signed a law to study so-called hate crimes. This was the first federal statute to recognize and name gay, 
lesbian, and bisexual people. This was also the first time homosexual rights advocates were invited to a White House ceremony. About a decade later, George W. Bush became the first Republican president to appoint an openly gay man, Scott Everts, to his administration. Everts served as Bush's director of the Office of National AIDS Policy. The most recent Republican president, Donald Trump, followed suit in the GOP's embrace of sodomy. In 2017, Trump appointed David Glaway as Undersecretary of Homeland Security for Intelligence and Analysis. Um, there was one question asked me during the vetting process, is there anything in your background that we should be aware of? And I said, well, I'm gay. And the White House official said, why would that matter? You're qualified, aren't you? This made Glaway the first open homosexual to hold this position under a Republican administration. That same year, Trump appointed James Abbott as a member of the Federal Labor Relations Authority, making him the first openly gay member of this organization to serve under a Republican administration. In 2018, Richard Grinnell was sworn in as the United States ambassador to Germany. And in 2019, Robert Gilchrist was sworn in as the ambassador to Lithuania. Both men are openly gay. And in 2020, Trump appointed Grinnell as the acting director of national intelligence, making him the first openly gay cabinet level official. Once upon a time, I taught high school and I had seniors and this was a class on morality. And of course they won't ask me all these questions. I said, guys, I'm not gonna answer your questions one, like, is this a sin, is that a sin? Rather, let me lay out what God's plan is so that you can answer for yourself what's a sin and what's not. So after we went over marriage and we went over the plan in the garden that for Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply, and then how our Lord raised it to the level of a sacrament so that it becomes caritas, it becomes charity now, and it becomes propagating the species for heaven to um, raise children for heaven. Basically, that's the model. If you stray from this in any which way, through fornication, adultery, whatever, you are straying from this model. The more you've strayed, the deeper and more grave the sin. This is a gift, and if you use the gift wrong, not only is it not going to work, but you're offending the, the giver of the gift.